Kevin's question says, hi, I know you guys have talked a lot about carb loading, but what do you think about taking creatine to help aid recovery and also replenish muscle glycogen faster? For example, between stages during a stage race, maybe something for Nate to try out. Hate to tell you, Kevin, but Nate has definitely tried this out. This is like some low hanging fruit. Yeah. You got to dig deep into yeah. science to find something that Nate isn't trying. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, the question basically creatine we should probably take this from a top level then we can get into more of the details yeah let's do it um yeah from a i i'm, I'm sorry chad i will not do this deep dive justice at all uh <laughs> so you you can still have it back as soon as you get here um from a super basic level creatine um effectively enhances your ability to like use cellular energy for a slightly longer period in time yeah um which works really well for some things and not so well for other things. Mm -hmm. um, again, got to preface it. Everybody's different. Everybody does different <laughs> things. Um, it's just the way it works and it's more trial and error again. Um, one of the things that, that is interesting is that it, depending on the quality of your diet, um, you will need less creatine supplementation than other people whose diet is not really sound, got um, it. including um, vegetarian, vegan diets have much less sourced, uh, naturally sourced creatine. So depending on where you fall on that spectrum, um, again, I think we say it every podcast more or less yeah. really quality diet helps across the board. Mm -hmm. So this would kind of mitigate some of the need for, for creatine. Um, but based on what it does, it really only increases really short duration efforts. So yeah, we're talking like powerlifting. <laughs> yeah, like there's a reason it works really well in the gym, and there's thousands of studies about resistance training with eight to ten sets, eight to ten reps and sets in between. It works super well for that. Yeah, but we are not doing that um, totally with different. what we do. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how like even if you went up like a, a thirty second climb, it's a totally different strain that we're talking about. Yeah, you know, like in, as hard as you can for that thirty second climb, it's different. Like it's different. It's a totally different type of stress on the muscles for mm -hmm. sure. And um, so even though even if we're as we're condensing our view down into people that this is benefiting, um, even people who do super super short efforts, um, depending on what your priorities are you still get some weight gain with creatine almost always which is part of the reason he he um, mentioned uh the carbohydrate increased carbohydrates mm -hmm. um that does go along the same line so you depending on what your event is and if you have a really hard time of actually um having enough stores to make it through a long event i don't know uh, sure. there's, there's not that much science out on that there is some um I bet we can link some in the forum. Yeah. We, can, we can link all the things we, we looked at for this. Sure. Um, but uh, there is weight gain. And for almost all cyclists, weight gain is not optimal. No. Yeah. In fact, I was working with a nutritionist on, or actually, I, I don't know, a dietitian, I guess I should mm -hmm. say, because nutritionist is like a fictional thing, I'm told. I don't know. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I think I said that once on Instagram and I got yelled at. So, um, but uh, I was working with a dietitian on, on going through and just analyzing what I was doing and trying to move into things. And she had worked with a lot of different strength athletes and then some endurance athletes. And she basically said, like, here, let's try creatine and let's see. And I took it and genuinely next day I was five pounds heavier, like it yeah. instantly. And that five, that five pounds for a cyclist is a lot. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. especially if you're getting to the point where you're, you're really, you know, talking about a knife's edge of competing at the front end of any sort of competitive race, five pounds is way more than enough to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, but to her credit, in this case, she was like, what I've found is that it can just help athletes to be able to recover better in between sessions, especially if they have two back to back, that sort of a thing. But she said results vary. She hadn't seen anything. And this is once again, totally N equals one case. This is not a study, right? But she basically said like, this might be able to help you if you have two a days or if you have something like that. But she had mentioned, so I don't really know if it makes a whole lot of a difference that like there's logic leaps basically putting into place that it would make a difference. Yeah. And that's always a danger that you follow with any sort of science that you have is, is basically taking a logic leap beyond that. Yeah. To apply it to yourself, like, yes. especially when you're looking at studies and papers, uh, no matter how similar that study and is to whatever your, uh, use cases, it's yeah. still not the same, right? Uh, it can't be. Um, and so there, there is something to be said for people trying it out, right? Yeah. Especially if you have time and no goal events. Um, there is some, 
Uh, there has been wattage increase associated with the weight gain. So for some people, um, maybe that's a worthwhile trade-off. Maybe five more pounds and 10 more watts is awesome, and you'd, you'd be stoked on that. Sure. Um, in, my, in my opinion, we were talking about it. I think it's like track sprinters. DH racers, maybe BMXers. Yeah, enduro. Enduro, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm, not with enduro. They I do a know. lot of climbing. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's enough uh, total work. Like any endurance case use case, it seems not to be worth it in my book. Yeah. Um, I it would be you'd have to be really wishing for something magic if you uh, are kind of longer duration. Um, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. There's always more studies that can can come out. Yeah, right. I hope I hope we don't have to take it and suck. I don't want to weigh more. <laughs> I have I have nothing to add. No, no scientific uh, background on creatine except for I took it a ton when I was lifting weights in my twenties, and I didn't touch it when I was racing bikes because mm-hmm. it just didn't seem to be worth it. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, maybe it gives you a stronger sprint, but you're sure. already at you're already at you know whatever 300 watts or 280 watts for a s- sustained amount of time and then you before sprint. that yeah it's already it's already been used up <laughs> yeah. it doesn't i don't think it quite works that way right I, in fact i bet if you ask like top sprinters you know if if peak power was the main deciding factor in them winning races they would not say it i don't yeah. think so it is. many other things <laughs> yeah. that lead into it right yeah. and yeah. it's it's your positioning leading into it. it's your ability to be able to recover from efforts to sustain a high amount of power for a much longer period of time yeah that's all the stuff that really makes a difference it, it's funny i was listening to uh, this morning i was re-listening to the word or to the book peak by mark bubbs which if you're listening to that book it's it's painful to listen to be I, I almost think he designed it to be hard to listen to because you usually like run listen to things on 2x or something you know to get through it quick but he squeezes words in really quickly and then takes like one to three second breaks in between like groups of four <laughs> words. So it's <laughs> clever, Mark. Um, but anyways, in that book, Peak, it's got a lot of great information. And he actually covered this one section on uh, Lachlan Penfold. He's, I believe, like the Melbourne, Melbourne, one of their rugby leagues or rugby teams. He's like, uh, he's one of their performance coaches. And he talks about his recovery pyramid. It's called Penfold's Recovery Pyramid. And the base, he talks about the foundation, it's sleep, nutrition, and stress management. And that's like emotional and mental health, right? That If you don't have that in place... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> after that, he says, then you look at the training plan, right? And then after that, then you look at like the athlete monitoring, or basically like how you guide the athlete on how to get through this, not controlling it, but guiding them. After that, he's talking about like therapeutic tr- treatments that are more like long-term. And then you're talking about recovery modalities. So at that point, mm. you're talking about ice baths, compression sleeves, recovery boots. And we are so guilty, all of us cyclists, at like looking at the top level and trying to refine up there and totally ignoring anything down below, yeah, right? Yeah. So like we're like, this creatine in between stages is going to make me win this race. That's the difference. <laughs> it has nothing to do with sleep or nutrition. It's not the nine hours of sleep that you got for the year beforehand. Exactly, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. the and the diet that you were eating yeah. and, and everything else and how you've organized your life to be able to support this sort of training rather than fight against it. All the different things that you have. The training plan that you've been following. So... I'm not saying this in this case, you know, Kevin to basically say like, Kevin, like scrap creatine entirely. Sure. You might be able to work it in, but if we're looking at trying to find marginal gains, let's look at big gains first. And there's a ton of them. Mm. So, uh, so yeah, uh, check that book out. If you listen to this podcast, you would love that book. So it's similar in many respects to the books like Endure and everything else that have mm-hmm. come out that have got a lot of buzz. Uh, it's a good one. Hey, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Pete. And if you like this video, you should subscribe to our channel. There's a lot more where that came from. And you can give us a thumbs up on this video down below. If there was something you didn't like, give us a thumbs down and tell us what we could do better in the comments below. If you want to get answers to your coaching questions, you can check out the videos over here. And if you want to see more race analysis videos, check them out right here. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, you should head over to trainerroad.com. It works. It's It's how Pete's so fast. Well... Sort of fast.